But again, in the spirit of being blunt and, uh, and straightforward, uh, I think I was going to be a whole lot more impressed if uh, the place was to actually not use hydrocarbons rather than to not produce hydrocarbons, because that really is the challenge. Uh, it, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we will have to reduce the supply of oil and gas and, and definitely coal, but we're only going to do that by stop using it. And therefore, um, you know, there's a role for us to play in shaping new markets, new markets perhaps for renewable power, which is, by the way, not the only solution. We also have to shape new markets for hydrogen, as Secretary Kerry said. We have to shape new markets for biofuels. Otherwise, we can't decarbonize long-distance shipping or aviation, etc. And altogether, these new markets for these new energy forms are a whole lot bigger than what electricity currently can address. But to just say, let's stop producing oil and gas, and then somehow the world will figure out how to go without it, uh, I think it's not exactly the right way of dealing with the problem. It, uh, so I think the moment we say no more oil and gas from federal lands or the Gulf of Mexico or, or from the US in general, it will just be imported. If he said no more combustion of hydrocarbons in cars, uh, no more combustion of hydrocarbons in industrial processes, no home to be heated anymore with oil or gas, uh, then we have a different discussion. Uh, so, and, but that's the discussion we need to have. We are only going to get to net zero if on a sector by sector basis, we have the right pathways and the right recipes to wean that sector of using carbon-based energy. And mm -hmm. that I think is the real challenge. And that challenge- you know, Can I- adequately can, address. Sorry. Of course. Rebecca, can, can I comment? No, I, and look, Ben raises a very real question about sort of the realities of how you make these transitions. But um, the, I mean, the problem with gas is if we build out a huge infrastructure for gas now to continue to use it as the bridge fuel, when we haven't really exhausted the other possibilities, we're going to be stuck with stranded assets in 10, 20, 30 years, whatever it's going to be. And, and gas is primarily uh, methane. And we have a huge methane problem, folks. With the thaw thawing of the permafrost and the thawing of the tundra, we have the capacity to go up in certain places and light a match, and you can see the water burning. Uh, the fact is that, that uh, uh, methane is 20 times more damaging than, than uh, if not more, than, than, um, uh, than uh, fossil fuels. So, I mean, the, the problem is you know, we have some other alternatives, and politics has turned against some of those possibilities. I'm speaking particularly about at least exploring. I'm gonna, everybody's going to scratch their head about where John Kerry is coming from on this one, but we ought to be exploring, as Bill Gates is, what the possibility is of fourth generation modular nuclear, because it is zero emissions. And if it pans out to be able to do what designers say it can do, which is not melt down, not have proliferation challenges, not have waste challenges, then wow, maybe we have something if we don't you know, locate them like the Fukushima right on the shoreline or an earthquake fault or et cetera, uh, we have the ability to perhaps manage that if we needed to in emergency. I'd Secretary rather do that. Sorry, go ahead. I need to I need to call on Amina because she needs to to go to another panel. Amina, how does this sound to you over the short term? Um, and I know you're very concerned about the impact of the pandemic in the developing world and and the countries not being you know nearly as as able to 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 really uh, make changes as they need to be. Well, we're very encouraged about what uh, the, the commitments that are coming for the long term, but not encouraged by the short term commitments at all. I mean, I think uh, when um, when Ben talks about being blunt about this, I think he's absolutely right that we need. You can't be talking about new if already the science tells you you need to be decreasing that production by 6% per annum, and what we're seeing is an increase of 2%, that cannot be helpful. Um, you do have you know, control over certain perceptions on markets and fuel it. And so the signals coming from you and the plans for you to actually be on the right side of, of, um, of history are really important. 